for Saturday has arrived. On behalf of AmWestEntertainment.com, I'm Joe Christofek, joined by the incomparable one, Pat Cummings. And Pat, it's not Dubai World Cup night, but Super Saturday is an excellent appetizer. Yeah, this would be uh, kind of when you when you indulge a little too much in that first course. Uh, that's what happens here. It's 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 almost like a main meal in and of itself. Uh, the purse structure is there. We have uh, Group One events, four hundred thousand dollars, three hundred thousand. The money's being tossed in all corners. Lots of action, some intriguing matchups, some new faces, and at the end of the day, uh, we'll be set up well with the local contingent for the world's richest night of racing. Most definitely, and this video is going to provide some excellent information on all of those races, but if you want up-to-the-minute information, you want to join us on the live chat. We've been doing these the last couple of years. They are sensational. We are trotting out a star-studded cast of producers and panelists. Of course, Pat and myself will be there. Also, Mikey Adolfson, Mackenzie Kirkerhead making her chat debut. Jim Gilchrist, Caleb Law, both nice enough to help us on the chats. Last year, they'll be joining us once again this season season as well. You can go to amwestentertainment.com, click the live chat button, and it'll take you right into the chat. We will begin approximately a half an hour prior to the first race on Super Saturday. Also at amwestentertainment.com, lots of Dubai racing information all season long. Partner website amwager.com, fan-friendly interface, advanced wagering tools, and the best player rewards program in the business. Pat, before we get to night 10 of the carnival which is super saturday let's go through a brief recap of what happened nights eight and nine we raced thursday and saturday last week well we had the uh, uae oaks and local time really completed the treble she won the 1000 guineas trial the 1000 guineas and then the oaks really just very dominant she was uh, in all of those efforts so so she is uh, potentially done she could come back in the uae derby we'll see how that goes i don't think any real clear f uh, cut decisions have been made on that yet she was not a nominee to the kentucky oaks for what that's worth uh, safety check um, we said last week uh, the horse of the carnival would probably be the one that uh, emerged victorious from the zabiel mile between safety check mm -hmm. and dark emerald uh, both of whom uh, really kind of stepped up their game. Safety check one, Dark Emerald was second. Kind of perfect. Dark Emerald's a great story, too. Four starts at the Carnival, $243,000 in earnings compared to what he did through 25 starts in the U.K. where he earned $98,000. Shows you the power of the Carnival and all props to the connections, and they might be coming back in the Godolphin Maya. And we ended on a sad note. Uh, from the Nat Al Sheba Trophy with the loss of Cavalry Man, who sustained an injury in that race and unfortunately uh, had to be put down. Uh, really a, an overwhelming amount of support out on Twitter uh, regards to that. A lot of people really liked him. He was uh, just a, a, a longtime stayer, uh, 38 lifetime starts prior to, uh, to that race, and uh, 10 wins, uh, 10 placings and over $3 million in earnings, and I know his presence will certainly be missed in the Dubai Gold Cup, so condolences certainly to the connections of Cavalry Man. Yeah, as great as the carnival is, it can be a tough game sometimes, so I echo those sentiments on Cavalry Man. Pat, one of my favorites over the last couple of carnivals. Unfortunately, we will not be seeing him on the racetrack any longer. Saturday, March the 7th, as you mentioned, is Super Saturday, 7.35 a.m. Eastern for the first post. Seven thoroughbred races, six of these are group events, about $1.8 million in purses on the line. The featured race, amongst many good ones, the seventh race, the $400,000 Al Maktoum Challenge. It is one of two group ones on the program, 2,000 meters on the dirt. And, Pat, let's start with race number two. We've got a very small field here. It is the Al Bastakia. It is a prep for the UAE Derby to be raced on World Cup night. One of the horses that I've loved watching this entire carnival for many reasons, Moop to Hedge, is in this compact field of seven, but he's not the morning line favorite. It's an undefeated horse from Uruguay, Sir Fever, perfect 10 for 10, but in my opinion, maybe one that you want to go against here. This is a, a strange horse for me to try to evaluate. Yeah, Joe, he is unbeaten, Sir Fever, and the race, I think, really depends on how good Sir Fever actually is and how good he is here. Uh, 10 from 10, unbeaten, 
an expensive private purchase out of Uruguay, uh, reportedly I think the most expensive horse ever purchased from Uruguay, goes to Godolphin. Charlie Appleby has him. They sent some of his staff over to Uruguay to automatically uh, try to acclimatize him to the routine of that yard, then brought him back over when everything was said and done. And He's been over in Dubai. This is his first start. He could run in the Dubai World Cup. Godolphin doesn't have much for that right now, at least those that are wearing the blue silks. And so they have him in for the Dubai World Cup as well as the UAE Derby. He's going to carry 59 and a half kilos here as a Southern Hemisphere three-year-old, technically older than those Northern Hemisphere three-year-olds. And he, he tends to race handy in his races. There's, there's many reasons to like him. He's done nothing wrong. He is trained by Charlie Appleby. Appleby's 0 from 25 this season on the dirt with one second and two thirds. That doesn't breed a whole lot of confidence. And William Buick hasn't won a race on this dirt track either, although he's also on this. He's also on another favorite uh, later in the card on the dirt. Uh, Sir Fever is going to get plenty of attention at the betting windows off of all of those ones, Joe. But I'm with you. Uh, I, I want to see him prove it to me here. I want to see how good he really is outside of Uruguay, and he has to prove it. So, uh, Sir Fever, three to five, no thanks. I'm with you, Joe. I'm on Mubtage. Interesting race, obviously, for all the race, uh, all the reasons that you mentioned. Mubtage is a horse that we've been impressed with. He lost to Moff 2 last time. I'm guessing Moff 2 awaits on uh, World Cup night in the UAE Derby? Yeah, presumably. Haven't heard anything otherwise, yeah. All right, let's move on to the third race on the program. This is a $200,000 Group 3, the Mahab Al-Shamal. And uh, this is 1,200 meters on the dirt. And we do have an American Invader that I'm very interested in, Cool Cowboy. I got to see this horse race quite a bit during his time in the States. And I do believe that uh, he's a talented individual. He's your 2-to-1 morning line favorite against the likes of Krypton Facta, uh, Factor and Farmha, the next two choices, at 7-to-2 and 6-to-1 respectively. Cool Cowboy's a speedball, Joe. He goes straight out to the front and is really an ideal purchase, a private purchase uh, into Doug Watson's yard. Uh, he comes over uh, not having run in the best races in America, but he does them well. He goes to the front. He tries to make all the running. He's unbeaten on dirt, too. That's counting for something. Four of his wins have come over this trip. Uh, he deserves – he's going to be the morning line favorite. I don't know if he deserves to be, but – he is going to be the, the favorite in this race. I'd be shocked if he isn't. There's too much familiar form there and too much American participation in these pools, even early on a Saturday morning, that, that people are going to be able to avoid what he has done. And we don't have Ronaldo the Wizard. If we had Ronaldo, maybe things would be a little bit different. Uh, but Cool Cowboy, definitely the favorite. We need to go back and take a look at the last prep race for this. So that was the Al Shindaga Sprint and a couple horses that are coming out of this, two horses that are going to probably be fairly short overall in this field. First, we have Krypton Factor. He is in the uh, navy and yellow striped cap, two back on the rail. We also have Ronaldo the Wizard. We'll just focus on him briefly just to see. He's the eventual winner in the yellow silks. They said last week he was going to miss this race and go straight on to the Golden Shaheen. We also had Speedhawk back on the inside. He was behind Krypton Factor. We play it out here, and, and Krypton Factor just rolls uh, to the front here. He tracked the early pace, ran on very well. This is a horse who is clearly feeling better than he was last year. He had a very poor carnival in 2014, wasn't him himself. He was okay in 13, but he finally started coming around after some time off, had some turf races in the UK, had a win at Hamilton, fairly low-level stuff, but then he shows up here in the Alshindaga, and he looks a new horse. I think they've finally gotten some things straightened out on him. I like this effort, and he was actually faster than Ronaldo the Wizard in the final 100 meters of this race. Speedhawk kind of flattened out a little bit at the end. Ronaldo's Ronaldo. He's just going to run his race. He's not going to be real pretty doing it either. But uh, Krypton Factor for me is the horse I won here. I'm going to take a chance against Cool Cowboy, maybe see what we get from him first up and, and have him poised for something after this. But I'm going to go Krypton Factor, Cool Cowboy, and Speedhawk 289 in the Mahab al Shama. We've got another sprint here, Pat, in race number four. This is the Maidan sprint. It's on the grass. 1,000 meters equals five furlongs, U.S. dollars, up for grabs, 175,000, and a group three. And this race is an absolute crapshoot. It's a full field. You've got a four-to-one morning line favorite and the old-timer, Soul Power, who is making his first carnival appearance of the season. Uh, what do you make of this race? In my estimation, there are so many different ways you can go. 
Yeah, we could talk for 20 minutes about the race, so we might as well just spend about a minute on it, Joe. Uh, there are there are truly so many different options. If we said, what horses do you think can win? Caspian Prince via Africa, uh, maybe Casper Netcher, uh, Mirza, Soul Power, Monsieur Joe on his best day, Banadier, Sir Maximilian needs to rebound, Lancelot Delac had a bad start last time, Movie Sta has run very well, uh, in the UK. Odd Tug has a local win. Extortionist is fairly classy. And if Fit Jan were to get in off the also eligible list, the reserve list, he could get in and, and, and have a say. And Ra de Vitesse was very good in Bahrain. I, I just think it's it's a classic five furlong turf dash. Lots of things that could happen here. Soul Power, he hasn't been his best first up or second up, but they almost use these to really get him fit for the UK season. I'm going to take a shot here with number 14, Movie Star. He ran very well against Soul Power first up last year, and that was when Soul Power had a couple runs in him, and he really likes firm going, does Movie Star. I'm going to go with number 14, Movie Star, at 8 to 1, and I'm actually going to go ahead and make him the Amwager value play of the day in a wide open made on sprint. I couldn't talk you off anybody. If you would have made me guess which race the Amwager value play of the day was going to come from, that would have been my first guess. So the Maidan Sprint, a absolute crapshoot. We'll see how that one plays out, and we'll see if Pat or I utilize it in our bankroll challenge a little bit later on. Race number five, Pat, is the Burj Nahar Group 3, $200,000 up for grabs. One mile, 1,600 meters on dirt, and Tamar Kuz. Wow. If you talk about horses of the meat... And you talk about most improved horse of the meet, I think Tamar Kuz rates right up there. I mean, this horse has really, really come into his own more and more impressive with every start. Another tough test here, but one that I think he can pass. He's your two-to-one favorite. Safety check had his three wins. Tamar Kuz could get his third tonight uh, in this episode. Uh, drawn on the rail, too, Joe. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's that's where he found himself last time, and just, boom, off to the front he went. And when I saw that rail draw when the entries came out, I think it, it might be race over. Uh, straight to the lead for Tamar Kuz. There's not uh, a whole lot of other speed in this race either. So uh, Muanid could go forward, but, but he was kind of held back off the pace last time. You don't know what you're going to get from Romange. We've seen two starts from him, and that, that last one was obviously better than his first. Uh, Lael... You know, he's taken a major step up in class here. Hafek has run in drips and drabs throughout the carnival. A lot of different chances. We also get a local debut from Pylon for Mike de Cocksyard. That is uh, his uh, first sand uh, dirt start in the UAE, but he was more or less on that surface before. I'm, I'm going to stick with Tamar Kuz, Joe. I just think Tamar Kuz probably towers over this field. He has that win over Gold City. He has a win over Hafek. Uh, Tamar Kuz for me. I'm going 1-6-10. and 10 in the Burj Nahar, a Godolphin mile prep. He still isn't behaving perfectly. He's still a handful to load into the gate. You're still curious if eventually that's going to catch up to him against better competition, but this race doesn't seem much tougher than what he's already beaten despite the class rise. So uh, three in a row looks like uh, a foregone conclusion. Maybe not, but maybe somewhere close if he can repeat his current form. Race six, Pat, is the $250,000 Group 2 Dubai City of Gold. This is a very good race on many levels. You've got lots of contenders. You've got fresh faces. You've got some back class. You've got some horses that appear to be on the upswing as far as their form goes. Lukewarm 7-2 morning line favorite is Sky Hunter as uh, James Doyle gets the mount here for Saeed and Godolphin. I think this is a competitive race today. I don't think we'll talk about any of these horses as being competitive on World Cup night, Joe, because this prep shaping up for the Dubai Shima Classic, that $6 million race on World Cup night is going to be an absolute dandy. I expect we're going to see main sequence, Harp Star, one and only, Flincher, uh, designs on Rome out of Hong Kong, and they're going to blow these horses away. So this is kind of a big prep for them here. Uh, Song Craft, to me, was the one I wanted. He, he won a handicap this year. He won one last year. He came back and he ran second, beating a, a half a length to excellent result in this spot a year ago. I'm taking the same approach. I, I think that race was good enough. This race is probably uh, easier than it was last year. So for me, Song Craft, we know he's going to get the distance. That's a question with True Story. Sheikh Zayed Road, I'm not sure if he really classes up here. He won a fairly weak Group 1, Grade 1 in, in the States. 
Coupe Tato is an interesting one, getting back on grass. There's not a lot of pace here. Songcraft will go forward. Uh, I'm, I'm going to side and stick with Songcraft here in a race that is locally competitive. I'm just not sure it, it's going to have any impact whatsoever on the Shima Classic. So in the Dubai City of Gold, seven Songcraft from eight Sky Hunter and four Sheikh Zayed Road. That's my pick. And Mick Dom with a chance to maybe uh, throw in a placing. The only way the winner of this race is going to be a factor three weeks from now is if it's one of the upswing horses, one of the horses that still has a little bit of room between where they are now and their ceiling, which to me would be Cuptado or Umgio, and they're both going to have to take a huge step up from where they are now in order to even get a sniff on World Cup nights. So. And it's worth mentioning that Umgio's probably in this race because Mike DeCock already has six horses going in the Jibble Hatta. So <laughs> he didn't want seven in there. Only He's six? Got, yeah, right. I mean, hey, you, choices. Um, <laughs> but we'll see if Umgio can get over the trip. Uh, it's definitely an experiment. Right. And at some point you got to try experiments like this. So it'll be a very interesting race nonetheless, regardless of how the outcome plays moving forward to World Cup night. Race 7, Pat, is the feature, if you want to call it one, on a night like this. El Maktoum Challenge, round three, 400,000, group one. A lot of these horses with aspirations maybe of a trip in the Dubai World Cup itself. Two to one morning line favorite is the veteran Prince Bishop. A lot of questions as to how he would handle the dirt in his first appearance over it a few weeks ago. But in my estimation, Pat, he responded with flying colors. He ran a gigantic race. One of the most impressive closes I've seen over the dirt at Maidan this season. He didn't win. Frankie Fork Fingers did. They match up again in this one on Super Saturday. Let's go right into the video, Joe, of uh, the Mactoom Challenge round two. Frankie Four Fingers is up on the lead in those light blue silks, but Prince Bishop's well out in the back here in the green silks and the red cap, and he'll kind of weave his way around and come through. LeBernard Dan's also in this field. He's three wide, kind of just off the lead here. And look, Frankie Four Fingers responds, and, and he kicks on for home a, a good way out and kind of breaks a gap. This is a, a ride very similar to things we used to see at Nat Al Sheba on dirt. They, they'd catch a gap at the top of the stretch. Sometimes you'd catch them, sometimes you wouldn't, and they'd slip away. But the way Prince Bishop responds here in the stretch was wildly impressive. Uh, he clearly showed he could eat the dirt, take the kick back, and, and still run on. Uh, that's impressive. We haven't seen that many horses do it that way on the dirt. He clearly took to this surface. And it leads us into the track stat of the day. And this, I thought, was particularly compelling. Just how fast was Prince Bishop? more than Frankie Four Fingers in the final 400 meters alone, about 1.07 seconds. Frankie Four Fingers did it in 25.92, Prince Bishop in 24.85. He was coming. If the Mock Tomb Challenge round two was 1,920 meters, Prince Bishop would have won. Now he's getting 2,000 versus the 1,900. I think we might see Frankie Four Fingers turn into more of a Godolphin mile horse, so I thought the effort from Prince Bishop was very good. Now, it's only a field of nine. Eight of these horses have already been seen locally. The one that has it is Long River, and I think he might be up against it in a tough group here. You know, he wasn't all that proficient in America. Three of his four wins came at Aqueduct against maybe some suspect company. So I think I'm just going to keep the focus local. It is worth at least taking a look back at this 2,000-meter handicap that Storm Belt won a couple weeks ago uh, on the outside in the black hat, and he... Uh, Storm Belt just kept coming on the outside. Tulane was on the inside. And, you know, I wouldn't say he got pinched out. He, he had to go through a tough spot. It may have halted his momentum a little bit. Uh, Tulane now will get Richard Mullen back in the saddle, which is, is a good sign for that yard. They don't have anything else here. Uh, uh, actually, uh, you know, he's the number one jockey. But for me... Uh, Storm Belt is, is the progressive horse here on the surface. He's run really well, and he's taking the step up. But Prince Bishop was too impressive coming from off the pace. I do question a little bit how fast it's going to be, but the presence of Henry Clay, I think that should keep Frankie Four Fingers uh, into the speed enough. And Prince Bishop, for me, uh, I'm going to chalk out with Prince Bishop on top of Storm Belt. And I don't think Tulane is without chance to run a big one. I'm going to go 4-2-6 in the Mock Tomb Challenge, and we'll get, probably get two or three horses here into the World Cup. Yeah, you can't take anything away from Frankie Four Fingers, and as you mentioned, Pat, pace does make the race. I see 
Henry Clay's presence being very important, as you mentioned, and also maybe Long River Fresh. Has, he has shown speed in the past, so maybe he'll go forward as well. And I Joe, just, yeah. we'd be remiss if we didn't mention African Story either. Of course. I mean, this is the, the World Cup winner from last year yeah. on a different surface, but you know and I know that horses typically this season – very few times have put in a complete dirt clunker and done absolutely nothing and come back to win. The only horse I can think that, that has been involved in either in a race on the carnival night was Pit Stop. Pit Stop ran a complete clunker over this surface and came back and won a local race last week. Uh, that to me is the only one who's done it. African Story would buck a trend if, if, he, uh, if he came back and ran a big one. I just didn't think he liked it. Yeah, right. And they're giving him another chance. He's on the rail. We'll see. This horse has surprised us before. In regards to pit stop, I picked him that day. He ran the you clunker. Picked him two, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Was it two, right, two, <laughs> two starts, starts ago. ago. Right. I didn't think he ran that bad, but not enough to pick him again. Of, of course, he pays $113 uh, last week. All right, Pat. So we've reached the end of the Super Saturday card, race number eight, another group one event, $300,000. This is the Jebel Hatta, 1,800 meters, one mile and one eighth on the grass. And the king, Versen Gatorex. Could he be any more impressive than he was off the bench? That remains to be seen. But if you need that race and moves forward, I'm scared to see what he's going to do on Saturday night. I don't think he was anywhere near 100% last time, Joe. And when he won this first up effort in the Al Rashidia, it was something else. You know, here he is on the outside, uh, and he's just kind of loping along. Christoph Sumian took a long time to ever ask him, and everybody else is already kind of fully committed. True story was in this race, and he'll stretch out in the City of Gold. But Versen Gedericks made it easy, and Christoph Sumian said after the race that the only reason he really got into him is because he was just idling. He felt him idling on the lead, so that's when he got into him to make sure he kept going. Very impressive effort. He surely has improved for this. This is a very thought-out plan, and to be honest, the Dubai turf, formerly known as the Dubai Duty Free, the field isn't shaping up at least in the early going, with anywhere near the quality that the Shima Classic is going to have. Versin Gedericks is a strong early favorite for that race. This is just another prep on the way there, and if they've just kept everything the same, I think this is Versin Gedericks to repeat in the Jebel Hatta. Now, is he the only horse in this race with a chance? No. But I don't think there are too many that do have one. Hunter's Light would be the other one. Uh, back to his win in the Dubai Millennium, he, uh, you know, pretty much uh, just kind of easily dispatched this field. Uh, his second consecutive win over the Maidan turf course. Uh, first time he's put back-to-back -back wins together, I believe, in his career, but uh, certainly on turf. Uh, fantastic runs. Just don't think he's up to this class. Uh, El Aval, on his best day, uh, has not been able to beat Hunter's Light. I think he could run in here a third or a fourth placing. Anything better than that would be a surprise. Something dr dramatically would have to go wrong with one of the top two finishers. Uh, Darwin, Johann Strauss, they've all run well. They're, they're placing chances. Calling out could rebound. Lamario could run a placing. I think just about anybody could be third. But I think it's really Vercingetorix, then a, a gap to Hunter's Light. Vercingetorix for me, I'm going to make him the Amwager. Best bet of the day, Vercingetorix to repeat in the Jebel Hatta and go on as the favorite in the Dubai turf. Hunter's Light has been a nice story. To see him rebound from some subpar efforts to score two wins in a row impressively, Versus Gatorex is a different animal. And I agree with you on the Mario. I think he's moving up. I thought his victory was very impressive. He's not going to be able to shine the hooves of Versus Gatorex, but I think he'll run well, and I would definitely include him in my trifectas. And, Pat, that brings us to our selections. You can find the selections of myself, Pat Cummings, and Mackenzie Kirkerhead at DubaiRaceNight.com. Let's once again take a look at our selections for Super Saturday. Pat, we'll start with you. You've talked about a lot of these already, but why don't you recap them for us? Yeah, they're out there, Joe. Krypton Factor, uh, I, a lot of people ask me on Twitter, kind of, who's your best of the day? Who's your next best. Give me a top three. Versin Gedericks is the best for me on the day. I would say uh, Prince Bishop is probably my second best on the day. I, I feel pretty strong that he's going to run a good race. 
And then after that, I would say uh, Tamar Kuz. The reason I don't kind of put him up there right on the top is, is just that he, he does, there's still that nagging, uh -huh. lingering question mark as to whether or not he breaks out on top. Uh, I mean, I'm going to use him in the bankroll challenge and single him, and I'll take my chances there, but you just, ah, uh, it's tough. Uh, anyway, we haven't heard your top picks. Let's, let's, wh what do you think? All right. Uh, move to Hitch, I'm with you. Sir Fever to me, big double question mark. Moff Tula waiting in the UAE Derby. My boot to Hitch, I think, is legitimate. Cool Cowboy, I like his races here. I think the Maidan dirt surface will suit him to a T. Viva, uh, excuse me, Via Africa crapshoot in this fourth race, and this horse loves to win. He's got 10 victories on his resume. We'll give him a slight edge. Heavy metal pad. Horse looked like a rock star on the racetrack last week, and he ran to it. He, he wound up winning it like 15 to 1. May have found a new home on dirt. You know, I know it's going to be tough to beat Tom Arcuse, but he's going to offer value again, and, and maybe he's just a different horse on the dirt. I think Kuptado returning to the grass should suit him well. I think he might like the distance as well. Prince Bishop, one of the most impressive non-victories I've seen in the entire carnival in finishing second sure. behind Frankie Fourfingers. I'm right with you with him. Right with you on Verse and Getter X. King of this jungle. Huge return victory. Last him out, and he should be even better this time. And that brings us to the Amwager Bankroll Challenge, the Pauper. Once again, <laughs> defeating the Prince for the second year in a row. Pat jumped out to this big lead, Tom, like Tom Marcuse style. <laughs> but Prince Bishop style, I've run him down. One more week, Pat, for you to pass me or at least show a profit. Right now, you got an $8 reprieve last week because of a scratch, so you've only spent $892, but you still need to make 13 bucks in order to show a profit for the carnival. Yeah, so we're going to take a chance here, Joe. Um, <laughs> I was trying to, to play this around the way that I thought would maybe best get some value, get over that hump, and get a little more. So I'm going to start in race three uh, in the Mahab al I'm going to use, use Krypton Factor on top in a $1 trifecta. And we'll put kind of the new shooter Pharma in there. Never know if she takes to the dirt. She might. So we'll go Pharma, United Color, Cool Cowboy, and Speedhawk in second, all in third. Maybe get a Satwa story to run a big race or something. So that's a dollar trifecta. Then we'll start to pick three in that race. Singling Krypton Factor. It's a four dollar play. We're going to single Tamar Kuz on the end of it. And in the Alcaz Sprint, hope to get some value. We'll use Mirza, Banadir, Lancelot Dulac, Movie Star, and Atug. That is a twenty dollar play total. Then in the fifth race, again, I'm going to single Tamar Kuz. I'm going to let him show me, uh, you know, Heavy metal's going to have to prove it to me, Joe, basically. Um, I, I even tossed him out of the trifecta here. <laughs> Fool me once, you know. It'll be my fault if it happens this time. Uh, Tamar Kuz on top of Romanche, Gold City, and Muanid. And then we'll take a bunch of uh, Romanche, Bannock. I'm still going back to the well with that. <laughs> Gold City, Muanid, Pylon. Leo and Hafek to run third. That's a $2 trifecta play. And then in the uh, Mactum Challenge, go 246, 246 all. That is uh, Storm Belt, two lane. Storm Belt, uh, Prince Bishop, and two lane, and take everybody for third. So hopefully, I'm just looking to break $1,000 at this point, Joe, and get even. You, on the other hand, you are about wealth accumulation. What do you have? What? <laughs> That's what it's all about, Pat. And I, I think maybe you can have it arranged when we're in Dubai World Cup week to visit Heavy Metal in his home. And, and you and I could take a picture with him if he runs well this week. Uh, sure, Joe. Okay. Let's yeah, do that's that. where I'm going. I'll, I'll hit pit stop while we're there, too. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get down to some serious business here, and that is the business of making money. Last week, Master of War was my key horse. He ran third, made a few bucks on him, just missed increasing my exact path, but we still got it. Erdogan over Phalanges, I got back uh, 337 bucks, Pat. Joe, I'm going to do the same thing you did to me. Your same three horses, if you would put them in the trifecta, what was that going to pay? That pay would have paid a lot, yeah. It would have paid a lot. And while you read off your picks, I'm going to get what that trifecta payout is for everybody to know. So go ahead. Okay. Give, give us your bankroll challenge for the day. Either way, I got back $337 on my 100 last week. 
So I'm showing a $438 profit for the season. And this is just play money. We've got a pick three using four horses in race three, six horses in race four to Tamar Kuz and heavy metal in race five. We're coming back with an exact in race number five using Tamar Kuz and heavy metal on top using Romanche, Gold City, and Lale for second. And then in race number six, a couple of different pick threes, $10 pick three, Cooptado, Prince Bishop, and Vercingetorix. $5 pick three, Sheik Zayed Road, and True Story with Prince Bishop with Vercingetorix. So those are my bankroll plays, trying to pad my bankroll as we conclude the 2015 Dubai World Cup Carnival. Pat? It could go well. That trifecta paid 554 to 1. So uh, you could have just boxed those same four horses, Joe. Hey, you did it to me. So I'm, at least the one that I did paid $3,300 <laughs> if I had done it in the other way. Anyway, or the yeah. superfecta instead of the trifecta that I had a couple weeks ago. But look, hey, congrats to you. Good job. And uh, it's still not done. We still have the World Cup, but at least for the carnival, uh, uh, we'll see if I can catch you and run you down. Yeah, well... In a perfect world, we both show a profit. And that's, I think, what we're trying to prove to everybody here, Pat, is during the course of following the carnival, you can get a good handle on key races. You can get a handle on how to play these races. You can get a handle on where the value lies. So, once again, just showing you that it can be done. You can have fun, and you can make money along the way. You can follow Pat and I on Twitter, Dubai Race Night, Track is Racing for Pat, Joey Decay Racing for me. And, Pat, we do have that live chat on Saturday morning, March the 7th. For Super Saturday, we'll get started about a half an hour before first post. Myself, Pat, Mikey Adolson, Mackenzie Kirkerhead, Jim Gilchrist, and Calum Law. We all have one thing in common, Pat. We all love the carnival. Absolutely. It should be really fun. Uh, look, it's uh, going to start you know, around that 6.30 to 7 a.m. U.S. Eastern time. But that's 11.30 to noonish in the U.K., 3.30 or so onward from the UAE time. Uh, and, and we're even talking, you know, uh, 7.30 p.m. in Hong Kong. Uh, join us from anywhere around the world. It'll be fun. Ask us questions. Interact. Uh, it's always great fun, and uh, we, uh, we hope you join in. Yeah, it's always a lot of fun every year for Super Saturday. We'll have another chat on Dubai World Cup night as well. For the incomparable one, Pat Cummings, I'm Joe Christofak. We will see you in the chat on Saturday morning. It's going to be a Super Saturday, that's for sure. 